Scorpio rising, the number one karmic rising sign in the whole zodiac. Hey, my name is Jeremy Ryden. I'm the birthday coach saying you were born for more. You deserve more love, happiness, success. I help you do that with the secrets of astrology. You'll not find a better channel for Scorpio rising. Subscribe now, ring the notification bell. It's like we were up in heaven and we were talking to the powers that be and we said hey i know we gotta reincarnate to learn our lessons reincarnate to burn off our past uh, uh karma and we were like you know i don't want to keep coming down here how can i burn a hundred lifetimes of karma in a single lifetime bam you were born a Scorpio riser. A Scorpio riser is the most difficult rising sign by far because it is the rising sign that has signed up to deal with the past baggage in a big way in this lifetime. That's what karma is. Karma's dealing with your past baggage, healing from it, learning from it, not repeating it. So why is that a, a harder for a Scorpio riser? Well, it's all because of your south node. Now, in the Vedic system, and that's what I'm going to be teaching today, the Vedic system, South Node is called K2. And you'll hear in the tropical that the South Node is what you used to be in the past. It's the things that you did a lot of, and you're very good at it. But in this lifetime, you should not pay attention to it, and you should just head towards the direction of your North Node. And that's true. But that's a lot harder for us because in the Vedic system... Not only is Mars our chart ruler, but the south node is the co-ruler of Scorpio. The K2 is our code ruler. And so you can't ignore your chart rulers. You can't ignore them. You ignore them at your peril. That's why I tell people, you got to exercise. You got to get in shape. Even if you were never into it before, if you're a Scorpio riser, you will not have success in this lifetime long term until you build up your physical body. Now, with that being said, K2 is our second co-ruler in the Vedic system, the sidereal system. And you know, like, what they say in tropical. What is K2? It's our past. It's our past karma. It's the things that we did a lot of, but we're not here to focus on that area anymore or not focus on it in a material way, in a very straightforward way. If we deal with it, we got to deal with it in a more spiritual, enlightened, uh, easy, calm, flowing uh, way. And And so... This can be a huge problem for many of you because wherever we see K2, because Scorpio rising is a compulsive sign, it is an obsessive sign, we get something in our thoughts and we could think about it forever, we get something in our spirit and we can mull it over and go deeper and deeper in it, so... so uh, that's hard for us because wherever our K2 is, because it is our chart ruler, we are really going to want to get into that area eventually. We really are going to want to do something in that area. But at the same time, we got to be careful because K2 says you can't control this area. You can't dominate this area. You can't try to make this area happen on your own. You got to be more relaxed, more carefree and go with the flow. So what happens? Well, you'll hear in many Vedic systems, whatever house K2 is in or South Node is in, if you get too serious about it, it's going to vanish. It's going to disappear. And so that's why a lot of people get upset when they say K2 in the 7th. Because it, does that mean I'll never get married? K2 in the 5th. Does that mean I'll never date? And uh, K2 in the 10th. Does that mean I'll never have a career? No, you can get married. You can have a date. You can have a career. But you definitely are going to have to do it in a more laid back, gentle, kind, spiritual, intuitive way. You get that seventh house of the south node, many times you're connecting with past lovers or even a past a karmic relationship. Karmic relationships hurt like hell because usually we fall in, fat, fall in love fast, right? It just feels like, oh, this is the one. And just as quick as you fall in love, you know what? Bam, this sucker blows up in your face. You know, the faster you love, the faster it falls apart many times because it's karmic. And so you're dealing with the hurt from the past and the lessons you need to learn from the past. And and so I don't know about you, but I don't really want that many more karmic relationships as a middle-aged Scorpio riser.
So what do you do? What do you do? Well, if you had that, for example, just for example, wherever you have K2, South Node in, is you need to, like that rock song, how does it go? Hold on loosely, but don't let go. Hold on loosely, but don't let go. Meaning if, if, if you're in South Node in the seventh house of marriage, if you're the first one to propose and you try to try to take that dating to a marriage level, you may find out that your engagement breaks off time and time again. Because wherever K2 is, it doesn't want you to major in that area. It wants you to, to recognize it, you know, pay it, you know, be honor it. But really, it's the opposite side. It's that North Node side that you really got to put your more energy into. So is that seventh house marriage. Uh, if, if you're trying to get married and put all your focus in the marriage, that marriage can dissolve because really the North Node's now in the first saying, what's your identity? What are your goals? What is your purpose? So what do you do in the situation like this? What you do is you really give energy, like the tropical says, to the north node, but you don't necessarily completely ignore the south. You use the south to help you reach the north. So how would I do that if the north node was in a uh, south node was in the seventh? Well, I would intuitively choose partners that will help me reach my personal goals. That are would allow me to have my independence. To pursue my dreams. Fifth house, dating. A lot of times you're dating people from the past. And it's very karmic. Does that mean you can't ever have dating or romance? No. What it means is, don't focus so much on your dating that you forget the opposite house, the 11th house of higher goals and aspirations within groups. So look for your affection to come from groups. It's okay to get your self-esteem built from your social networks that are doing goodwill on the earth. If you look for your self-esteem to be lifted up from your boyfriend or girlfriend that you're currently dating, you may lose that boyfriend and girlfriend over and over again because K2 South Node says, listen, I don't want you to put all of your attachments, your anxious thoughts, your feeling into this house. What house do you got K2 in? What house do you have that South Node in? Now, let me tell you something. You better get spiritual. And what do I mean by that? Man, you're yelling. K2 in the, in, in trap, uh, Vedic means spirituality. It means letting go of worldliness. It means seeking a higher path. Scorpio Riser, I have told you time and time again, I don't care what religion you are, if you are no religion. There's a divine spark in you. There's a spark of the creator in you. And it is your duty to nurture, protect, and fan the flames of that spark. You are God manifested in flesh. And that is a beautiful thing. And you you got to protect your spirit at all costs. K2 is a spiritual planet. So you got K2 in the second house. Does that mean you have no money? No, that means you must uh, honor spiritual resources in your life. You must go ahead and seek well, but seek it in a spiritual way. You know, which to me, there's no greater wealth than feeling connected to the oneness of God, the oneness of the universe, the oneness of spirit. You get that, uh, you know what I'm saying? Just put it anywhere. Put it anywhere. Now, there are some places the South Node likes to be and loves to be in the 12th and it loves to be in the intuitive places, right? Eighth and fourth. But you must start listening to your intuition. So this is also tricky because Mars wants to go. I want to find. I want to get it done. No, I won't back down. But our other co-ruler, K2 South Node in the Vedic says, hey, you got to be spiritual. You got to be intuitive. You got to be laid back. No wonder, no wonder we're up and down so many times because there's part of us that says, I'm burning this shit down. And there's another part of us that says, I'm building this place up. God has got a sense of humor. So if you are a Scorpio riser, there are many, many karmic karmic baggage that you may be going through in this lifetime. It's it feels like punishment, but it's not. It's enlightenment. It's 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 learning how to live a spiritual life. It's learning on what's really important in life. How to be able to embrace 
this world in a more um, compassionate, spiritual, loving, uplifting way while still being a warrior, while still being a fighter for your goals, while still taking care of your body. So, so really we got two, not one, but Two big things as a Scorpio riser. Mars says you got to take care of your body. K2 says you got to take care of your spirit. So you got to do both, body and spirit. If you're just doing body, sooner or later, K2 is going to kick your ass. You're just doing spirit, sooner or later, Mars is going to kick your ass. So learn to do body and spirit. And best way to do that is to engage in a routine that allows you to do both, right? You run a marathon, then you go meditate. Just an example. All right, this video's getting long. Put in the comment section where you got your South Node. Where do you got your K2? And we can have a conversation about it. Namaste. Go to the gym.